Most people are familiar with the ancient Egyptian civilization, which arose along the banks of the Nile River. However, the Egyptians were not the only major civilization that existed on the Nile. Just south of Egypt was a culture that was very similar yet very different. Who was Egypt's sometimes enemy, sometimes trade partner, sometimes overlords, and sometimes subjects? Learn more about the Nubian civilization and the Kingdom of Kush on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. Hey everyone, I wanted to tell you about a podcast that I think you might enjoy called Profoundly Pointless. Profoundly Pointless is an interview podcast hosted by former TV news anchor Nick Van Zant. It is a highly eclectic show with interviews with everyone, including UFO investigators, exorcists, food chemists, star researchers, professional slap fighters, ice climbers, and many, many more. The topics and conversations are never the same. In fact, you might be interested in checking out the interview from March 31st with a particular travel photographer and history podcaster that you might be familiar with. Profoundly Pointless has twice been nominated for an Ambie Award for Best Interview Podcast, and if you're not familiar with the Ambies, they are the Oscars of podcasting. The topics and conversations are always different, but the goal is always the same. Learn something new. Something that I know all of you take to heart. Profoundly Pointless is available on all the podcast platforms, including where you are listening to this right now. Once again, please go check out Profoundly Pointless. If you think of the Nile River, pyramids, and hieroglyphics, your mind will almost certainly turn to ancient Egypt. To be sure, Egypt had all of those things, but they weren't the only civilization that shared those cultural traits. Ancient Egypt extended down to about the modern-day Egyptian-Sudanese border. This was the limit of what was known as Upper Egypt. And just to be clear, when I'm referring to Upper and Lower with reference to the Nile, Upper refers to Upstream, which is actually in the South because the Nile flows North. But why did Egypt stop there? The Nile keeps going, and you'd think that given the constraints of the desert, it would be natural for the Egyptians to just keep extending their influence to the South. The reason has to do with the natural barriers which are in the Nile River. If you remember back to my episode on the Nile, there are a series of rapids in areas where the river becomes very shallow. These are called the Nile Cataracts. The first cataract is just south of the city of Aswan, and the second cataract is located just south of the current border. It doesn't mean that life in the river below the cataracts was inhospitable. In fact, life along the upper Nile was not that much different than life in the lower Nile. So it shouldn't be surprising that a very similar civilization arose even further upriver from Egypt. And those people were the Nubians. Egypt and Nubia were in some ways mirror images of each other. Egypt had basically a one-dimensional kingdom that hugged the banks of the Nile. Nubia was a one-dimensional kingdom that hugged the banks of the Nile. Egypt had pyramids, and Nubia later had pyramids. Egypt had hieroglyphics, and so did Nubia. If you saw an image of an Egyptian pharaoh, he would be dressed in a very similar fashion to a Nubian ruler. That being said, while Egypt is better known to the rest of the world, primarily due to its location on the Mediterranean and interaction with other ancient civilizations, Nubia was not just a copy of Egypt. Nubia was its own civilization. If anything, Egypt and Nubia collectively could be called Nile civilizations. That isn't much different than many modern countries which are next to each other that are very similar. Austria and Germany, Sweden and Norway, Serbia and Croatia, Peru and Bolivia. So, who were the Nubians? The biggest superficial difference that most modern people would notice is the fact that Nubians were sub-Saharan Africans. They were black. They look very similar to the people who currently reside in Sudan and Ethiopia today. The origin of Nubia goes back very far. In fact, the Nubians can be considered one of the oldest civilizations in the world. I previously did an episode on how the Sahara Desert was once actually a grassland. In fact, this was the case relatively recently in geologic history. The Sahara started to turn into a desert only about 8,000 years ago, which was about the same time that the Nubian civilization arose. What probably happened was that nomadic hunters who roamed the grasslands in North Africa had to find a place to settle down when their grasslands turned to desert. The place they landed was the very fertile, if narrow, banks of the Nile River. This story holds true for both Egypt and Nubia. In fact, before the rise of dynastic Egypt, it's very difficult to say where Egypt ends and Nubia begins. We know that when these nomadic people began to settle down, they began building megalithic structures, 
One of the oldest can be found in the Nubian Desert in what is known as the Napta Playa. The Napta Playa is located just north of the Egypt-Sudan border, about 60 kilometers west of the closest point on the Nile River. There is a stone circle there which is believed to have been used for astronomical observations, and it's 2,000 years older than Stonehenge. Archaeological data from human remains in what was Upper Egypt shows that many of the people who lived there at this early time were most definitely related to the people from East Africa. Around 3500 BC, the people along the Nile began to solidify into political units. Egypt developed into two kingdoms that we call Upper and Lower Egypt. In Upper Nubia, the Kerma kingdom arose. Kerma is named after the city for which the kingdom is named. The ruins of Kerma are located along the Nile River, about 250 kilometers south of the Egyptian-Sudanese border, and about 500 miles north of Khartoum, the capital of Sudan. Kerma was probably the largest city along the Nile south of the cataracts at this time. Kerma is an extremely important archaeological site from the ancient world that most people today are totally unaware of. Kerma was a very large city for 5,000 years ago, with a population of over 10,000 people. There's evidence of complex temple building as well as tombs, and there are estimated to be over 30,000 graves with evidence of social stratification. While Kerma and Upper Egypt had developed into distinct societies by this point, there's clear evidence of trade and cultural contact between the two cultures. Some Egyptian gods, such as Horus, were venerated in Nubia, and Egyptian artifacts were found in Nubian tombs. Despite the obvious cross-cultural exchanges, unique Nubian traditions had developed. The Nubians had a very distinct form of pottery which they developed, and their funerary rituals were different from the Egyptians. Nubia first appears in Egyptian writing around 2300 BC. For the most part, initially, things between Egypt and Nubia were peaceful. Given that they were both surrounded by the desert with the river as their lifeline, they were natural trade partners. Nubians had good that they received from further upriver from what is today Ethiopia and Uganda that they would trade with Egypt. This included ebony wood, exotic animals, copper, ivory, and gold. There was a great deal of mixing between Nubians and Egyptians. Nubians served in the Egyptian army, as is evidenced by the statues of Nubian archers found in a 20th century BC Egyptian tomb. Several Egyptian pharaohs had Nubian ancestry. Mentuhotep II of the 11th dynasty, Amun Abbot I, the founder of the 12th dynasty, and Sekirni Tau of the 7th dynasty were all descended from Nubians, and many of their descendants would have also had Nubian ancestry as well. By the time that they became pharaohs, they would have had families that had lived in Egypt for decades and would have been culturally Egyptian. Things were not always peaceful between Egypt and Nubia. After the New Kingdom period and the rise of the 17th dynasty around 1580 BC, Egypt started becoming expansionistic. They not only expanded into the Levant, up around the coast of the Mediterranean, but they also went south and conquered Lower and Upper Nubia, including the Kingdom of Kerma. Nubia became part of the Egyptian Empire for close to 500 years. Between the years 1098 and 1088 BC, a quasi-civil war erupted between the High Priest of Thebes and the Viceroy of Kush. Kush now being the name of the Egyptian province located in Kerma. The name of the viceroy was Panahesi, who was Nubian. Panahesi occupied Thebes until he was pushed back to Nubia by the pharaoh, and there he broke away from Egypt, controlling all of Upper Nubia and most of Lower Nubia. One of the things that Egyptians were really good at was administering a large empire. Many Nubians were involved in the administration of Egypt and took this knowledge to form the new kingdom of Kush once they had become free of Egypt. After several centuries of occupation, the cultural lines between Egypt and Nubia had again become very blurred. Kush became a blend of Egyptian and Nubian customs. The primary god in Kush was the Egyptian god Amun. By the 8th century BC, Kush had developed a strong centralized royal system based on the Egyptian model. The Kushite king Kasta peacefully had taken over Upper Egypt. This led to his son Paye invading Lower Egypt and establishing the 25th dynasty which is also known as the Nubian dynasty or the Kushite Empire. The dates usually given for the 25th dynasty are 744 BC to 656 BC. Even though they took over all of Egypt, the Nubian dynasty had their capital in Napata, which was located along the fourth cataract of the Nile. Although no one knew it at the time, the Nubian conquest of Egypt actually spelled the end of domestic rule for Egyptians for centuries. When the Kushites left, they were replaced by a puppet dynasty controlled by Assyria, who were then replaced by the Persians who invaded, who were then replaced by the Greeks, and then the Romans. After the Kushites lost control of Egypt, they still existed as a kingdom in some form or another until the 4th century. If you've ever seen photos of pyramids in Sudan, 
They were built during the kingdom of Cush. The Cushites revived pyramid building that had been abandoned in Egypt for over a thousand years. The capital of Cush was the city of Meroe. Meroe is one of the largest archaeological sites in the world, and it's home to a large collection of temples and over 200 pyramids in various states. The Kushite pyramids were much smaller and much steeper than Egyptian pyramids, which allowed for many more of them to be built. The end of the 25th dynasty and the Kushite empire changed the relationship between Nubia and Egypt. Egypt was now controlled by foreign powers. When Alexander the Great conquered Egypt and his general Ptolemy established a new Macedonian dynasty, he never went below Aswan in the first cataract. When the Romans took over, there was a conflict between Rome and Cush in the late 1st century BC, which involved an army from Cush marching to the town of Kasser Ibrim near the border. In response, a Roman army of 10,000 led by the governor of Egypt, Gaius Petronius, marched to the capital of Napata, destroyed it, and then marched back. And after that, there were no more problems between Cush and Rome. The region then followed a path similar to Egypt, with the spread of Christianity in the 5th and 6th centuries, and then the spread of Islam in the Arabic language. There are still Nubians today. They are a cultural and linguistic group that can be found in both Egypt and Sudan. When the boundary of Egypt and Sudan was drawn by the British, it cut right through the Nubian heartland. The construction of the Aswan High Dam and Lake Nasser destroyed much of the traditional area where Nubian people lived. The Nubian language is still spoken, but it's threatened by the prominence of Arabic in both Sudan and Egypt. On an interesting side note, during the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, Egypt used Nubian radio operators as code talkers, ripping a page from the Navajo code talkers of World War II. Nubia has a very rich history, and Nubia is one of the oldest civilizations in the world. It's often overlooked because of the role Egypt played in other major civilizations such as Rome, Greece, Persia, Assyria, and even the ancient Israelites. The Nubian ruins of Meroe are some of the greatest ancient ruins in the world, and they should be considered on a par with Angor Wat or Petra but no one knows about it because so few people visit Sudan. Nonetheless, the Nubian civilization and the Kingdom of Kush should go down alongside ancient Egypt as not only one of the greatest civilizations in Africa, but in the entire world. Everything Everywhere Daily is an airwave media podcast. The executive producer is Darcy Adams. The associate producers are Thor Thompson and Peter Bennett. I just wanted to extend a big thank you to everyone who is supporting the show over at Patreon.com. I have show merchandise available there, including hoodies, t-shirts, and stickers. Plus, it really just helps me get this show out every single day, including, of course, weekends and holidays. Remember, if you leave a review or send me a boostagram, you too can have it read on the show.